In this video, we are continuing with our tutorial on time evolution of a particle in an infinite square well. Previously, I used a, a unitless analysis to convert our eigenstates of the Hamiltonian to a form where the running variable is a unitless variable. In this video, I'm going to actually probably break up this next section because that's where we're at now. We're going to break this up into two parts. The first one will be to represent this initial state here, and the second part will be to calculate the expansion coefficients for the initial state. So let's get started. I'm going to put my cursor here, and there should be a, a code button. There it is. I get a new code block to put in here. This is a piecewise equation, and a very nice way to make piecewise functions and represent them in MATLAB is to use conditional subscripting. First off, I'm going to make a variable to store this. It'll be a vector. It needs to be a 1 by nu vector, where nu is the number of uh, u points in our calculation. And the next thing I like to do is just plot this so that as I build it, we can see what is going on here and whether we're on target. And in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste the x label from above and the y label. And since I've run it, I have this result. Well, that's just exactly what we expect. Psi 0 is 0 all across the board. I'm going to copy more format matting here. Uh, this should go after the grid on so that this larger size and nicer font gets applied to the X label and Y label. So I'm going to run this again. That's looking good. Now actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change a couple of things about this previous uh, this, uh, result and this result because um, often we like to plot in quantum mechanics, not the wave function because it can be complex, but we'll plot the magnitude squared of the wave function. So here, I'll take this, I'll copy it, and then and right before it, I'll put conj, paste that thing, dot times, because it's the element-wise multiplication, and then that thing again. Uh, and I'm going to change the y label so that we put here psi magnitude squared, and let's just see how that looks. Okay, and that's looking good. That's just the square of those sinusoids we saw earlier. And in this case, I'm also going to do the same thing. Psi magnitude squared, so uh, put that in here. Okay, now moving forward, let's modify our storage vector so that it represents the initial state that we like here. And the way to do this, like I said, is conditional subscripting. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to take psi 0, and I could explicitly subscript its elements like 1, for example. That gets me the first element. But I'm going to conditionally subscript them. That is, I'm going to give a conditional statement here, or rather a Boolean expression, and it will address those elements for which that Boolean expression is satisfied. So uh, for the first range, I want psi to be u, where u is less than or equal to 1 half. So the conditional statement, or the Boolean expression here, is u uh, less than or equal to 1 half. And to those elements, we're going to assign u. Now, you're going to see that when I run this, I'm going to get an error. MATLAB's not going to like it. It says here the reason is the left and the right sides have different number of elements. And that's true because if you look at u up here, u has 101 elements, but you would expect that uh, psi, where u is less than 0.5, has fewer than 101 elements. And MATLAB just can't handle that. It doesn't know how to do that well. So I need to use this same conditional subscript there. So I only specify some of the elements of u. And now my psi squared looks like this. And this is a parabola which you would expect, you know, for psi squared if this is psi. If it's this is linear in u, this is going to be quadratic in u. A nicer way to do it perhaps is say define a domain for this condition. Uh, so I'll do it like this.
it's a little bit cleaner and then I don't accidentally you know mix my conditions so for the second region second domain we'll define domain 2 to match the upper condition here and I need to be careful domain 2 and domain 2 Oh, and I made a mistake. I didn't change this to domain two. So there we go. That ought to fix it. Okay, so if you plotted this, and we could, maybe I'll, I'll also add here the plot of psi itself, psi zero. So what I'm making here is a matrix. It's actually the first row of the matrix is psi zero. The second row is psi zero squared. We're going to get rid of this later. You can see here the blue is the psi zero it was plotted first, and then the red is the magnitude psi zero squared, which we saw before. Um, I'm going to get rid of this because they don't have the same units. We just go back to the uh, magnitude squared plot because we're happy with the way psi itself looks. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to use conditional subscripting to address certain domains in my piecewise function and to, to calculate and represent those parts of the function. In the next video, we will calculate the expansion coefficients for size zero.